G'day guys, Brock and I today are going to show you how to make this Lazy Susan. Real easy project, super cheap, um, you don't need a lot of gear, and it's only going to take us two sessions. I'm going to pop a list up of everything that you need for uh, material wise, there will be a plan for you, and again it's going to introduce you guys to a few more tools, which I'm a massive fan of. And, interesting fact. Apparently the Lazy Susan was named after the inventor's daughter who struggled to reach a few things on the table. That's it. Let's get into it. Sawdust and chrome. Sawdust and chrome. Everybody loves. Sawdust and chrome. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Firstly, we're going to do our top out of three pieces of um, some Vic Ash, or in other parts of the country, it's sometimes called Tassie Oak. Either way, I need three pieces, because three pieces will give me a 40 centimeter diameter circle. I'm gonna leave, kind of give you a plan for this, and I, I'm gonna leave a plan for the base. It's a 330. I've picked 330 because it kind of works well with the size of our Lazy Susan mechanism. Hardware store sells these. I think this one, which was, I think the big size, was like six bucks. Um, you can get them quite small too. So grab what you need. Obviously, you can make your sizes up yourself. This is just what we do here at school. Um, and it seems to work well. I do know if. If your base is too small or too light, and you go to spin it, it sometimes gets pushed around the table. So make sure it's a decent sized base. Decent thickness, so there's a little bit of weight there. That's about it. There's not much to it. I'm gonna teach you to glue up some boards. I'm gonna give you a couple tips, and a cordless drill. That's about all the gear we need. Have I forgotten anything, Brocky? Think we're good. Oh, for the base. I normally just do it out of a piece of scrap plywood. Um, there's always ply hanging around, we don't have to glue it up, and it's always dead flat, so. All right guys, hot tip alert. I want to explain a couple things. This is just some scrap pine I've got. I want to explain a couple things about the grain and how we should glue up. See how the grain on this one, and this all depends on how the boards were cut up as that, when they were logs. See the grain's got a cup to it that way. This one's got a cup to it that way. Does that stand out? Yeah. And see how this one is a little bit more upright. So depending on what parts of the logs these were, and this is how it's been cut up at the timber yard. When we glue up, you have to consider, you have to take into consideration the grain. So, if for example, I glue this, this up as a board, and I've got my cupping that way, I've got my grain cup that way, and that one's nice and straight. Over time, these two boards in particular will want to curve up. They want to follow the grain. So we have to counteract it. So I might flip one over. Because this one's relatively straight up and down, I actually would put that one in the centre. So over time, these should kind of counteract against each other and this should stay nice and flat. But, I shouldn't say but. What I do love about using ash in this kind of supply we've got at the moment See all the grains nearly dead straight, up and down? So within reason, I wouldn't actually have to worry too much about how we glued this one up. But I want you to take that into consideration every time you glue up, especially when we've got thinish boards. The chunkier they are, the chunkier, sorry, the chunkier they are, the less you have to worry about it. But what we want is these to be nice and flat, nice and perfect, and we want to keep the thickness. I don't want these to get any thinner. So we're going to take particular attention when we glue these ones up. So I might do it in this direction. Alright, that's it. 
Let's get into the gluing. When we glue stuff up, make sure you've got all your gear ready to go. I've got my three clamps, my boards, my glue, and a rag. First thing I want to do is quickly clean the clamps up. Mainly because we're here at school and they get covered in glue. And obviously if I've got lots of glue on the clamps, it throws out how flat my boards are going to be. So, a little bit of rock music and I'll clean these up. Make sure you got your handles hanging over the bench. Make sure your spacing's good. We want them nice and wide. Check that you like your grain. That one's pretty good. Oh, make sure whatever you like sideways, which one's the best looking, or if there's any damage, make sure. All the best ones are facing up. Give it a little squeeze by hand and make sure you like your gap. So that's going to work well. I'm a big fan of doing everything before, like kind of clamp it up before you glue it. Do that one, bro. So we're going to run out. So how do we fix it? Can you put this one in closer? Yep. Bigger voice. So we've run out of thread, which means we've got to move this up one notch. You can do that. So gently squeeze it up. That's going to be fine. You will see people put triangles on their boards. So when you glue it back together, even though we've only got three boards, if we get our triangle back, it means we've done well. The triangle works really when you've got lots of boards. If you don't have your triangle there, you know you, you, know you kind of missed something. Glue ones. A good bead should do it. The balance. I want you to make sure you've always got enough. But again, if you've got a stack of it, then you're just wasting your own glue. little scooch make sure you got your triangle make sure you got your triangle make sure your clamps are nice and wide-ish this is a good one to do with pairs so your mate holds it flat when you first clamp it up 
be nice and gentle. You only need to tweak it. That's pretty close when you... Don't over tighten it until you get your first, uh, your top clamp on. Could you back it off a bit? Yep. So make sure now that you're happy with how everything's laid out. This is where I want you to be real fussy. We only want to sand this a little bit. So I want you to be happy to be walking away from it, glued up. Because it doesn't take long before we can't do anything with it. And have a little look on the, I guess the clamps, make sure it's sitting flat on the clamps as well. Yeah. Uh, so that's not too bad. Tweak it just a smidge. Um, wipe the glue off. Your rag is slightly damp. Don't soak it, but you don't want it dry either. You know your clamps are tight enough when you can flip it to get to the glue on the bottom. Is that in the shop there? Your forearm's kind of blocking it. But... Yep. Make sure you sort out the glue that ends up on your bench. Especially if you're in my class, where you'll be sanding benches. All right. So that sets this up for tomorrow. I'm gonna to let it dry overnight. We're in no rush. I've got my plywood piece. Ready to go. I'll use the templates. We've got um, MDF templates just because we do this job a fair bit. Um, just draw a circle, use a compass, whatever you need. Oh, I'll show you a hot tip. Actually, I might do that as a little separate short video on using G clamps as compasses. I think that'll do for today's sesh. Make sure, please, I know I say it all the time, make sure you're happy to walk away from this because it's going to be exactly like that tomorrow. All right, guys. Be good. Oh, don't forget, if you like what we're up to, click all the buttons, leave comments, especially the comments. They're my favourite. All right. Peace and love, guys. Dad joke time. What does the Eiffel Tower and a tick have in common? They're both Paris sites. <laughs> All right, leave a comment, rate my gag. <laughs> uh, that's it, let's get into it. G'day guys, welcome back to our second session. Awesome job yesterday. The gluing up you guys done, I assume was perfect. I'm gonna show you today we're going to cut our circles, sand them, smooth them out so they're perfect. We're going to do the bases as well. I've got a trick to show you. But most important today, I've got a couple of tips and tricks to mount the Lazy Susans. Much easier than their kind of instructions they give you. Um, super easy. That's it.
If you haven't, make sure you click the subscribes and likes and all the other buttons. Comments in particular are the best. All right, let's get into it. So guys, I wanna show you a bit of a trick I've learned over the years. I do have a template I could use, but at home you haven't got one. I do have an old school compass I could use, but if you don't have one of those, and all you've got is your pencil and a clamp, I'm gonna show you what we can do. So, whack a nail in dead center. Now, we want ours to be about 40 centimeters, maybe a tiny bit under. I'm coming just inside that edge. Now, on this clamp, I know just from previous experience that if I hook my nail up kind of just in the trigger, and if I use this as my circle for my pencil, and I've got my clamp where I want, and with a bit of luck, I'll get a circle I can use. So please make sure you do this on the bottom. I reckon that and this guy, please make sure you've got your diagonal lines, make sense later. We can go to the bandsaw. Let's do it. Like always, I want you guys to be nice and safe. If this is your first time on the bandsaw, please go check out my video link to bandsaw safety. It's gonna pop up now. Um, make sure the guard's where it should be. The idea is my board and my fingers can't get through there together. And always, Please make sure you're cutting just outside the line, on the waist sides of the line. No matter what you do, if there's a little bit of waste there, I, we can fix it up. If you crash inside your board, I can't give you your timber back. So, I'm gonna take my time and do the big one. Brock's gonna jump on the bandsaw behind me and he's gonna have a crack at the little one. All right, let's get straight into it. Whatever sander setup you got at home, that'll be fine. We're gonna use the linisher. Um, if you've got a disc sander, just as good. Um, if you're hand sanding, use a vise. Um, whatever you guys need to do. But the idea is, when I'm finished, my hands are gonna love it. I won't feel any bumps. I won't feel any creases. I won't see or feel any of the bandsaw cuts. And um, that'll be ready to go. All right, so rock out again. All right, while Brock was sanding the edges of his, I've done the top already. It's nice and smooth, ready to go. The edges aren't too bad. I might give them a tiny bit of a hand sand out in the workshop. With the base, I need you to keep the cross. I don't need all of it, but I need most of it. If you can imagine where this is going to go, I need the cross underneath it. So it's totally up to you how much you want to sand. Um, it's one of those things, no one's ever really going to look at it, but uh, I might give it a hit around the edge, but I need to keep most of this cross here in the centre. So, you can watch this one in a little bit of rock music too.
All right, the fun part. We're going to attach the uh, our bearing plate. Now I attach it to the base first. For this one, um, I find it easier to attach. I'm not sure what the difference would be, but I attach this plate with the single holes to the base. So the idea is you want to line up those four, your two lines with all the holes. So it's got to go exactly there. So my diagonals from the start, exactly through the centers. And you need to use small mushroom head style screws. Can you see that in the screen? Yeah. So the flatter the head, the better, but I want the width. So I want them to hold them down nice and tight. So there's nothing clever about this bit. Just make sure it's lined up perfect where you want it. If you're new to using the cordless drill, I do have a video you can go to to watch. So take your time. You can, you could over screw this. But the idea behind these four mushroom head screws is the heads are so small that the base, sorry, the, the bearing plate, the heads of the screws, once they're all in on both sides, um, they won't interfere with each other. So, so that attaches to the base. Now, the hot, the hot tip with this one is, We've got to be able to th screw through the base into our top. And the best way to do it is get yourself, doesn't really matter where you go, but I want you to mark exactly the center of one of these, but have it off on the 45. So it's there. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna drill a hole through there, and the hole is gonna be big enough that a screw can fit through it. That's the key. So, uh, I need a piece of scrap. Maybe not Andy's wood. Pardon? Maybe not Andy's wood. Can't hear. Don't worry. So use a piece of scrap, you might have to move the camera across, piece of scrap but I want you to clamp it to the bench, so that's where we're aiming for. Now please don't use a big massive drill bit straight away much safer, more accurate to use uh, a smaller drill bit and I would go as far as giving yourself a tiny little kind of center point, center punch mark so drill bits can't wander around Make sure it's always clamped. Make sure your drill's nice and straight and upright. And you'll feel it kind of punch through. Let's check it. We're going to go a little bit further. Please use your clamps. 
only takes a couple second, seconds to use them. So how screw fits through, so that'll be perfect. Sorry, could you get that? All right. Now, to be honest, where you mount this on the base isn't as crucial as where we mount it when we mount it onto our tops. So this one, this one's going to be tricky. I'm going to try to describe it as best I can, but basically I want to see through the hole and I want to see that the hole for my plate lines up with the line. But I've got to check that all four work out. So I want you to take your time. So that one looks good. Oh, that one's close. That one's good. So they're not too bad. If you're gentle, you can you can move it around. Oh. Or if you're too rough like I was then, you do slide it. Again, please take your time. That looks pretty good. I find it a bit easier to use one of these longer Phillips head bits. Ideally, it's magnetized, which this one isn't. just until it pulls up. So you can, even though you've done one, you can check everything's close to where you want it. If you need to tweak it, just use a ruler. Last and final job is we get to oil it up. All right, I'll go grab the oil. I just use a Scandinavian oil. I use it pretty much on everything. I like it here at school. You can't really get it wrong. So just wipe it on with a little rag. Kind of buff it off with the big one. Nice work, guys. So that's another awesome project you guys have done with me. And Again, like always, we love that you guys are involved. 
let us know how you're traveling, leave your comments, spread the word, and um, let's build up our Sawdust and Chrome fam. Um, and I hope you got a few more tools out of it. That's it, get out of here. This is going to finalise a day for us. That all sounds horrible. Can you check the mic? Awesome work, guys. Congrats. Another awesome project underway. I said awesome too many times. Damn. Sorry, is it, was that recording? Nah. <laughs> i got to do the Paris sides. Yeah. Right. Keep your own. Yeah, okay. And I'll stop it. I'll fix it. Bugger. I think that's stopped. No, I think that's stopped. Oh, yeah, now it's playing.